A model steam engine test plant. Welcome to part 29. Completing the new stainless steel check valve adapter for the hand pump and live steam injector. And fitting it to the boiler, plus replacing the ceramic material in one of the burners and making a neat access point in the baseboard for burner removal. This is where I got to in the last episode. I've machined the barrel of the check valve adapter. And now I have to be careful. It's very important to make sure that I drill the holes in the barrel so that I can fit the check valves but if the holes are too close together, it will be an impossibility. And watching this clip whilst editing, I do realise I am holding them in the wrong position. And I'm marking the barrel with a felt tip pen. It is at this point I'm going to drill a couple of holes to mount the check valves into the adapter. Over now to the drilling machine to drill the holes in the barrel. It's sat on a piece of mahogany in the machine vise. The first thing to do is to line up a centre drill with the centre of the part. I've moved the centre drill to the end of the part where the threaded bit is. It's easier doing it this way because I can check the alignment easily on a smaller part. What I'm doing currently is drilling on both of the lines using a centre drill. This will guide the main twist drill so that the holes end up in the right place. Talking about twist drills, this is the first one I put through. I squirted lubricant into the part and you can see the smoke. This is not the final size though. As I mentioned in the previous video, stainless steel work hardens very quickly if you let either a lathe tool or a twist drill rub on the surface. You have to keep the pressure on all the time. I need to drill these holes to 9 30 seconds of an inch, which is tapping size for the pair of 5 16 by 32 threads per inch check valves. As you can see by this clip, the stainless steel is immediately getting very hot indeed. I will bear this in mind when I lift the part out of the machine vise when the drilling is finished. In this case, to let the part cool, there is a bit of a time lag while I thread it using a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch tap. You can feel how hard stainless steel is relative to brass by the amount of pressure you have to put on it when rotating the tap to cut the thread. I cut two very clean threads in this piece of stainless steel and after cleaning up the surface using some emery cloth in the lathe it's time to fit both of the check valves. The problem is the thread that's going to be screwed into the barrel is too big but that wasn't a problem in the outer part of the workshop I used my one inch belt sander to shorten the threads of the brass check valves. And here you can see the end result before fitting them. As always, I applied some Loctite 542 thread sealant to the joint and then I screwed both of these into the barrel. The second one was a bit tighter than the first one to get it into the right position and the paint was slightly marked by using a spanner on the painted part. I'll repair the paintwork on the hexagon part later using some satin black paint. This check valve is not in the same place as the previous one to accept the pipe from the hand pump, but with some very careful bending I persuaded the pipe to fit to this check valve. To finish the job all I have to do is retighten the banjo union for the pressure gauge and here it is facing just the way I want it to. I think it's time to give these burners a bit of attention, I'm really not happy with them. The ceramic in one of them is very badly damaged. You can see some particles here in the flue. After removing the particles of ceramic and blowing it out with the airline, it's time to give the first of these burners a bit of attention. As you can see, the one on the right is a bit of a mess. The one on the left is heading that way, but it's still okay. That explains why the right-hand burner wasn't as good as the left. There's nothing for it. I removed the ceramic material entirely and here I'm scraping the residue with the point of a chisel. This ceramic was attached to the main body of the burner using silicone rubber. And I was quite surprised how tenacious this stuff is considering how hot it got. I finished the job using a wire brush in my Proxon motor tool. Now the burner is ready for a new piece of ceramic to be fitted. As luck would have it, I do have two pieces of ceramic which should fit these brass burners perfectly. The only trouble is I don't really like this type of ceramic, but I'll try it anyway. I've connected the gas and as you can see, both burners are burning quite differently. 
I've just bought some more ceramic material from Amazon, which was a lot cheaper than eBay. The prices for this ceramic material vary immensely. I've slowed this clip down, and you can see that the burners do burn differently, but they both seem to give quite a good flame. In the final part of this episode, I'm going to put right the mess that I made of drilling the holes in the baseboard to remove the screws from underneath the burners. My original plan was to mount the baseboard in the machine vise of the milling machine and mill a slot, but this didn't work out. My milling machine is a bit too small. I mounted a piece of wood using existing holes in the baseboard. I didn't want to drill any more. But when I clamped the piece of wood in the machine vise, there wasn't enough travel between the machine vise and the main column. In the end, I used plan B, cut out the hole using a jigsaw, which I carefully did in the outer part of the workshop, but I didn't video it because you could only really see me hunched over the piece of wood with a jigsaw. Unfortunately though, as usual, the jigsaw blade wandered about, but it wasn't a problem. Using a coarse file, I filed the sides of the hole square. This took a while, and I actually got quite warm whilst doing this. But in the end, I got the rectangular hole nice and square to the baseboard. Filing metal or wood is something that you have to practice. I've had plenty of practice, and in the end, the inside surface of the hole was satisfactory. After all, it is underneath the baseboard, largely obscured from view by the boiler. I removed the two wood screws that were holding the piece of mahogany in place underneath, and that completes this episode. I am going to give the baseboard another coat of varnish, though, after rubbing it down. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.